Well, it's a good thing you got the big table. <laughs> I know. You should have seen the three people that were seated with me last time. <laughs> well, welcome, guys, to Game on Expo. We're so excited to have you. Oh, my gosh. This is so cool. Um, I have a few questions. Um, what kind of things do you... Wow. Just right into it. Right into it. <laughs> oh, sorry. Hi, my name's Ashley. I'm a big fan. Thank you. <laughs> there is like some pomp and circumstance that goes along I'm with it. I'm sorry. You can tell I'm nervous. <laughs> As someone who has grown with Kratos and now with Thor, you know, in these games, it's just been an incredible journey. Um, really sad to not see Sonny here as well. Yeah. Yeah. He broke his butt, but you know he whatever. broke his butt. From my understanding, he was in a skateboard competition, and he I thought it was his elbow. Was it his elbow? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> let's, let's go. I'm, I'm going with broken butt. Let's go. <laughs> Wow, I am old. <laughs> and now he'll never Elbow me is code for butt. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for you guys, what do you typically do? Um, because I always want to be in a voice actor's mindset. Do you prep for Kratos or Thor in specific ways when going into record? I, I don't know what being a voice actor is. What do you mean? <laughs> uh, well, no, because we got great voice actors here, and they do you know a million voices, yeah, yeah. and um, so I don't like what we do is just acting. I mean, yeah. it's the full performance is captured, and um, like, and it's, it's no slight. I mean, in fact, it's it's me really giving props to voice actors because that's a sp specific talent mm -hmm. that they have that at least I don't possess. Yeah. Um, I got one voice and that's yeah. about it. <laughs> so you're telling me you just go in and read? That may be an oversimplification, yeah. but... Because uh... <laughs> you say you just have one voice, but you know that one voice has just been very iconic for so many people, you know, like myself, where, you know, we've grown with Kratos for so many years and it's, you consider it just a voice, and but, you know, it definitely plays into the big... Acting is also a big part of it, the inflections and all that stuff. And um, I also love to know if you guys are very uh, outrageous, like when you're recording, do you emote a lot physically? Uh, <laughs> you, you, um, I don't know. You know, I, I was really sort of leaning on watching this guy, you know, is because it was my first time doing uh, motion capture and, and, and all of that. So, and the hardest part for me was actually just actually the scale of it is when I would see myself in the live sort of monitors that he was so much taller and, you know, so it was a little bit more like at, from, you know, coming with a straight acting sort of background. It was for me, it was it was a little more like playing a marionette than it was acting. So there was a big learning curve for me along along that line. Um, but yeah, I, I just sort of, I just sort of watched. It was, I, I loved it. The, the entire process for me of just seeing, you know, is stepping into the the gaming world, and and also just the the narrative paths that this medium is creating mm -hmm. is is just so beautiful for me to to watch. Is you know, as an actor for you know centuries, <laughs> is there's been plays, there's been TVs, there's been movies, and for the experience of being an actor. Those have been sort of very trope set sort of things. But then, you know, with the advent of, of streaming, you know, this possibility of you playing a character for 10 years, that becomes a different life mm -hmm. for an actor. And the same thing, you know, comes from, you know, with gaming is I'm, I'm, I've been really intrigued by coming to gaming cons is to seeing how people interface with a narrative differently. It's much more personal. Is like, is, you know, People come up to me and go like, "Oh, you know, I, I cried when Opie died," and it's this—it's kind of like you know, like you played their favorite song and you made them emotional. But when you know, when I'm meeting um, fans of gaming, it's like I just went on a journey <laughs> with you, <laughs> which, is, which is phenomenal. You know, is, is I love exploring all the sort of you know sociological <laughs> implications of, 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 the, of the medium. Yeah. So, yeah, and do you see yourself doing more video game stuff now that you've done like God of War's under your belt? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I had a blast. Yeah, I'm yeah. so glad to hear that because you know 
We know Chris has been around the block for a couple of, a couple of days. So we're not in a bad way, Chris. Come on. You no, just, you just painted yourself back into the corner <laughs> that you had just painted yourself out of. <laughs> Chris, you're old. <laughs> I'm just saying you have more video game, uh, you know, voice actor experience than Ryan does. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I keep hearing old. <laughs> well, it's it's so interesting um, hearing your take on it. Uh, the whole uh, psychology of entertainment, like television, a series. It's a very intimate act to allow someone into your yeah. house, what used to be once a week. Yeah. And then it became, you binge a whole uh, season of it in one day a week, whatever it is. It's a very intimate act, letting people in your house. But when you can interactively be part of it, and not for 10 hours or 12 hours, or but for 40, 50, 60, 70 hours. Yeah. The emotional bonds that are formed by going through the journey together yeah. Yeah. is, I, I mean, and I've, I've been very open about this. I, I think this is probably the future of storytelling, yeah. is to be able to tell stories in 40, 50, 60, yeah. 70 hours. Yeah. That's incredible. You know, we've all grown to know, you know, voice actors as one thing. And if then you say voice actor one more time. <laughs> <laughs> now you really tested me because I'm like, what do I say to this man? <laughs> We've all grown to know people who are in the media. <laughs> <laughs> On a tight wire. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Stop. We're kind of. coming. We're just sitting here going, we didn't have dots on our face and wear spandex to be called a. Right. Like moons ago, that's all it was. You know, was just a voice. Did you say moons ago? Yes. She's seen like 14 moons. <laughs> but, but no, it's just so cool to see how everything has just revolutionized and then putting mocap and mocap is just not popular for everything still these days mm. so it's incredible to see you know drawings get turned from one thing into now being art styles of people moving and interacting as these these characters in their stories like you said and you know, if this is the new art of storytelling, this is, we're on the right path yeah. for it, for sure. Um, when, stop. <laughs> Y'all, I feel like he's after me now. <laughs> Sometimes old people just lean forward. <laughs> There's nothing behind it other than tired. <laughs> so let me stop sitting straight because I'm exhausted. <laughs> So for you guys, whenever you're doing, I guess, Kratos or even Thor, when you have to add a little more accent to your voice, do you find that that adds some strain to your work? Mm, go for it. I, I honestly didn't add anything. <laughs> I, I mean, for I years... I read and I read. <laughs> well... <laughs> For years, uh, I mean, let's face it, we all have eyes, we all have ears. Uh, I'm a big black guy. So the feedback that I would get as a younger actor was that um, you make people uncomfortable. You're physically imposing and that your voice is deep, they feel uncomfortable. So I had to learn a higher pitched conversational voice to put people at ease. Yeah. Like, you know, I wasn't just going to walk in, yeah. by any means necessary. <laughs> <laughs> um, so to, and even if you listen to Teal, Teal had a, a much higher pitched voice at the beginning of the show than he did at the, at the conclusion of the show. Um, and that was just me settling into the uh, comfort of being in my own vocal sweet spot. Yeah, yeah. Um, before I did Kratos, I, I actually took um, uh, 
voice lessons uh-huh. because the studio, this is how l- little the studio talked to the creators back then. Yeah. The studios had decided that Kratos was going to have a British accent. <laughs> 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 That's great. That, that'll show you. But they paid me this year, to you grab. Yeah. <laughs> God. Yeah. Stay away from the water. <laughs> you shall not pass. Um. So, uh, for five or six months, uh, took these lessons and first day on set. <laughs> it's uh, the boat, one of the boat scenes. So I say to Atreus, stay away from the water. <laughs> and Corey goes, cut! <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of walks over like, because we really didn't know each other. And he kind of whispers, was that a British accent? <laughs> and I said, apparently not. <laughs> And he's like, why are you doing that? Yeah. yeah. And I was like, what do you mean? You guys paid me to yeah. learn this for six months. Yeah. He's like, that's stupid. <laughs> he's like, forget all that. We didn't hire you to do a British accent. Yeah. We hired you to do what you did in the auditions. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's uh, kind of how it went, yeah. you know? <laughs> Water. Water. <laughs> I uh, always want to know too if you guys try to play the games that you're in. Do you do you do you still a little bit? Yeah, really. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. I'm trying. That's cool. Yeah, I I got I got there was again like I'm a student of of things, so I like being I like learning. But is I got left behind like back with Sega Genesis. So like, (laughs) thank you. (laughs) I can only say that at gaming con and I get a laugh. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, no, it, it is when I start getting back into playing a little bit. Yeah, is I, absolutely before I started um, uh, filming. Is is I, I started playing. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, a little bit. That's awesome. And you? Um, no, I, because uh, I don't know if you can imagine this, but my kids are hecklers, <laughs> and um, so as my eyesight diminished and my manual dexterity waned. Yeah. You know, I got tired of saying, Daddy, your oldest balls. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I did watch Cameron play the entire game, the 2018. Uh, one of the greatest compliments. And my kids are, you know, very honest and they don't give up compliments easily. And uh, Cameron said, Daddy, this is the best game I've ever played. <laughs> and of course, I just That's start bawling. <laughs> Um, but you said so. but um, through the pandemic, we started this thing. We have Tekken tournaments. Um, so I can remember still like really good patterns. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so I would always use the Brazilian guy. Uh, what, what's his name? Uh, Eddie. Yeah. Only at a. <laughs> it's great. It's great. There was this character. Eddie! <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So, oh, okay. Isn't it cool? Oh, like the capoeira stuff. Um, and I d- identified with him, not only because he was black. Um, uh, when Peter Deloise um, started directing more and more episodes, he um, uh, used capoeira as one of the new fighting styles in Stargate. So I was like, oh, I can do this. So I can remember. And it was not only bonding for the family when there's nothing else going on in the world, but you saw, like, my wife is just so mild-mannered and, like, cool and da da She became a freak. <laughs> <laughs> like, she would um, use the blonde with the pony, uh, with the kicks. I don't know her name. <laughs> <laughs> we have faith in you. <laughs> <laughs> and I had never really seen her, 
like she, she doesn't really swear she doesn't so I beat her one time and she's like you fuck her like what <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where this came from but I like it <laughs> so it, it just brought out like another um, kind of um, aspect of the of and not just between me and my wife, me and my kids, but my my wife and my kids, and just to, it was not only a lifesaver as far as mentally, right. but it was there was great bonding. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's enormous. Mm. All right, who has questions? Oh, you're you're I'm, done. You're you're out. You're done. I'm yeah. done getting bullied. <laughs> Wait a minute, you can't come on. I was not bullying you. That word's a career in there. Well, that's no better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of being put in a oh, headlock fit. <laughs> was I blowing your ears out on the... <laughs> <laughs> All right, right here in the front. See that? Stop. Hi, thanks for coming to Game On Expo. I said that when y'all came in. I said thank you for coming. No, you said so. When you... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was the happiest moment Uh, for me, it was when I was done recording all of the efforts. Oh. <laughs> all right. So when they say, oh, we just need you to come in to, you know, just like one or two days to just do efforts. And I'm like, okay. So you go in there with a normal speaking voice. <laughs> you leave silent because you have just blown. It is, is, it's exhausting. It is doing the efforts for like eight hours. That, that, that'll kill you. Is is the, that was that was my happiness. That was like I'm done. Okay, no more efforts. Oh my god, <laughs> that, that took forever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, it was just going to work. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, it, because the especially excuse me, Ragnarok. Because the world was a dark place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The world was a very dark place at that time, at that time. Yeah. and it was. A place where everyone was happy to be there, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was so supportive and loving, and uh, um, it was a, 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 just a great escape from the realities of yeah. the world. I mean, our volume yeah. is like the most wonderful, supportive, communal yeah. space that yeah. like, I think I've ever been in. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. Right next to him. Speaking on that, you kind of mentioned during the. Um, the making of this game that you kind of had some difficulties and maybe some of the delays with the game and if you don't want to get into that just more about that uh, community that you experienced making this game and what it was like uh, being a part of this that got you back in such a great role. There you go. Um, what was you, the first part of your question? Because you kind of said, well, if you don't want to touch on it, but it didn't sound like it would be. What was, you, so what was the first part? You mentioned, part? Uh, I think you had put out in post that you had gone through some, and I didn't know if it was oh, oh. COVID-related or. Oh, no. Um, I was a cripple. Yeah. So when we started back on Ragnarok, um, I couldn't walk. So I literally was on a walker. And I would try to like toughen it out and do the scenes without the walker, but uh, I limped so bad that they couldn't fix it. So uh, in uh, August of 2019, I had both my hips replaced, back surgery and knee surgery. Yo. And so they put it on hold till I recovered. So I did a year's worth of recovery in three months. Um, so I will be forever don't get both your hips replaced at the same time. <laughs> wow. It's not as romantic as it sounds. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, but, you know, I don't want to give any company too much credit because they're fuckers. <laughs> um, but I've never been treated better or, or even respected, not only as an artist, but as a human being, yeah. as by... Sony Santa Monica, it really does trickle down from the top. And uh, I was so afraid that they were going to replace me. That's why I tried to. Yeah. And uh, for them to say, no, you're, you're Kratos. We can't do it without you. We'll yeah. wait. Yeah. You know? And yeah. then 
them not wanting to say why it was delayed. And I don't know if anyone follows me on Twitter, but that's why I said this has been approved by no one. It's delayed because of me. And uh, I will be, for you know, uh, all of them. I mean, I've told them, you know, I really see us working together for the rest of our yeah. lives, yeah. you know, because it's just a situation I've never been in before. Yeah. And just, they're just great folks. Yeah, you know? it is It is really like a beautiful crowd. Like, is, uh, is every, to show up at work when everybody is so happy and they're all, and every single person there is spot on top of their department. Mm -hmm. and th th these are professionals, you know, above and beyond that these are people who are masters at their work and everybody shows up like we're making like a high school musical. Like mm. this is so much fun. We get to make this dope thing and everybody in the world is gonna love it. Mm. it, it was beautiful. It was yeah. a great experience. Yeah. yeah. To, to be in a space where people are happy to come to work yeah. Yeah. is very rare. Yeah. And it's down to the last person. Everyone was happy to yeah. be there in the yeah. morning. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. Right here in the hat. Yeah. Um, Christopher Ryan, when you got cast as Thor, uh, what was your reaction seeing the, that specific design of Thor? Most people that think of Thor, they think of like Prince Hemsworth Thor. <laughs> yeah. But you see Thor in Ragnarok and he's got this big beer belly and everything and that. What was your reaction seeing that, that version of Thor? Um, yeah, it was a trip. So, was, uh, <laughs> so they, you know, is they called me and they said, you know, we'd like to offer you this role. And I said, great. And I was, you know, and, and I was over the moon. And we were supposed to, I was supposed to go down to Santa Monica Studios, and then it was closed. And then they said, let's meet for coffee. And I, and then all the coffee shops were like everything was total on total lockdown. And I said, well, you guys can just come over to my house. And then so they came over to my house, and for seven hours told me the history and, and also the, the entire narrative for Ragnarok. And I was like blown away by how meticulously it was woven together. And I was just, I was over the moon. I was like, absolutely fantastic. I was like, I was like, I'm in. And they're like, all right. And then we want to show you some of the artwork. And they showed me everybody, all the, all the new looks of everybody. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is amazing. And they're like, and here you are. And I was like, <laughs> and I look up and they were like, yeah, we're kind of going with the, uh, and I was like, yeah, I guess we are. I was like, I, I, I dig it though, I dig it. As long as he's got, you know, some tats on his stomach, uh, we're good. We're good. So, yeah, I, I, I was actually really proud of them that they went that way with it. Is, um, and also, it's just such a beautiful counterpoint to how, elegant Kratos looks and like everything is so sort of savage it's just show some and also it was just you know irrespective of, of the way that it played into the dynamic of all the characters is I just felt like the character that they were creating had this pathos to him this uh, this sort of you know wounded character that you didn't want to see as totally armored up you wanted to see that he was you know rough around the edges so I thought that they they the decision to do that with the physicality was was a really really strong move yeah let's see right here at the cat hand mm -hmm. <laughs> no the other cat hand. <laughs> <laughs> How rich is your family? <laughs> Does your family own a studio or network? <laughs> Wait, you were kidding, right? No, you weren't kidding. Okay. <laughs> and neither am I. <laughs> right here in the front. <laughs> so obviously in your careers, as absolutely not voice actors. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, it's a lot more challenging than it looks to a non actor, right? Mm. Uh, what was the biggest challenge going from, like, standard on screen acting uh, to doing the whole performance for video game? That was a beautiful little. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was <Don't> wonderful. <laughs> you take notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, I was surprised by how much more physically demanding yeah, it is yeah. Yeah. because, you know, in live action, you have 
setup time. Yeah. So you have half hour, hour, hour and a half to, so, you know, sometimes it's, it's ridiculous how much time you have in between takes. Because there's really no setup time, yeah. Yeah. you are constantly doing takes. And sometimes to <clears throat> live in uh, whatever emotional space that you're in, yeah. For extended periods, is wow. it's it's really tough, not only mentally but just physically. Yeah. Uh, um, so that was the biggest uh, surprise to me. Yeah, that and you know, and I mean, you see it in the in the game, but is a lot of the film, you know, is there was no cuts, so these takes would be five seven minutes long. So, I mean, you had to bring your A game to you know, not just with your blocking, but you had to be aware of where the camera was and where all the props were. But is is just knowing that if you screwed up, you were screwing up you know, <laughs> yeah. a lot. Yeah. You know, um, so is that that was probably the hardest part for me was that any time that you were filming things, unless they were little tiny bits, for the scenes that you would see that they were all in one take. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. Um, I think I've told some of you at the table uh, when I was going through the script I read this one particular line I called Matt I was like dog this line gonna go hard on black twitter <laughs> <laughs> and the line was um, death can have me but it earns me yeah. and <laughs> Like I get like I got yeah. goosebumps like I and like when I read it I had to immediately call him and uh, it was just a dope line and but just the deeper meaning of it is like yeah. I'm here till yeah. you come get me yeah yeah there's a mission to be accomplished yeah. and it's gonna get done yeah you know? um, for for me it was actually it, it wasn't a line it was just uh, it was when Thor dies and he was reaching out for, for his daughter and he sort of disintegrates his that, that part I felt like they really executed because I didn't know how it was going to play um, but I thought it was so sort of heartbreaking so I, I love that part mm -hmm. you know I, I really found um, they subtextually the relationship between Kratos and Thor because yeah. at the genesis of it they're both just men who really want to be better fathers. That's right. That's right. You know, That's it right. isn't like that just to the yeah. heart of. Yeah. That's it. That's the whole thing. Let's see. We'll get one in the back. This gentleman here. Mm -hmm. As she points just to the back of the room. <laughs> Any of you gentlemen. In fact, all at once. <laughs> 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 or as I call it, high school. <laughs> I was, it was, it was, you know, it's funny, is, is, I had the same experience when I watched uh, the, the episode where uh, my character on, on Sons of Anarchy died. I was like, I was watching that character and I was crying too. I was like, so it was, it was a trip. I was like, oh, this mother, I was like, I was like, I'm pretty tough. <laughs> There was a little bit of, a little bit of, uh, like, a, you know, a golem type dialogue. <laughs> that, that's a good question. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, this is the young man in the front. Are you a cat person or a dog person? Asking the real questions. <laughs> uh, I, I am, I am a dog person. Um, I'm actually a, a positive reinforcement dog trainer. Mm. I, yeah, um, I have I have been for a long time. I studied under one of the one of the masters, one of the, who brought positive reinforcement um, dog training to the United States, and uh, and I have ten dogs. Wow, that's dope. And six ducks. <laughs> and, I, and I trained the ducks too. No. Yeah. Yeah, they'll fly to you, turn around, kiss you. Yeah. It's all the same stuff. It's I the hate same you. <laughs> Bigger than me, better looking than me, younger than me. And now he talks to animals. <laughs> um, I've always been a dog person, but my wife, when we first met, she was a cat person, and I had just had to uh, 
give away my prized dog. So we were animal-less. Yeah. So we went to a shelter and they had all these wonderful, but they had this old cat that they said, no, you don't want him. He's like mean, he scratches, he bites, he da da da. So of course. <laughs> so sure enough, you know, he scratches me and that. But we finally got him home and we just left him alone. And then we're watching TV. He comes up sit, and sits on my lap. Yeah, the biggest Aww. thing in the world. And I was just like, oh. yeah. So her, the first birthday she had when we were together, I thought, I'll, I'll get her a kitten. Yeah. Well, you know, you go, but they have their uh, litters together. <clears throat> so I, I couldn't separate them. <laughs> so for so how many you got? We ended up with nine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, that's why we get along. We ended up with nine cats. <laughs> that's some stuff right there. So, but when we came back to LA, because it's up in Vancouver, yeah. um, we had we three other cats uh, made, and you know because of age, uh, we unfortunately lost uh, them. But we ended up getting, uh, we rescued um, uh, a husky and a half Malamute, half husky. And they're just, they're the laziest, most beautiful, <laughs> and they just want to be loved, yeah. you know? Yeah. So if you ever break into my house, you'll get loved to death. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, who's next with the yellow bucket hat? Wow, the little white girl's kind of aggressive. I'm not, uh, <laughs> Just adapting my environment. <laughs> well, all right. Good, good. Um, first, I love you guys so much. Um, I Yes, it did. <laughs> they're, they're more mellow. It's like you're distant towards Atreus and you're distant towards your wife and daughter. And you've been talking about your whole your family this whole time, but how what did you tap into to basically say, man, let me hate my kids? <laughs> Well, I see you've taken her course. Oversimplification 101. <laughs> um, I, you know, for the way that I sort of saw it was for both of the characters in a little bit is I, I can see I can see your point, but is is it's kind of like a race car. You know what I mean? Is here are characters who are born to be warriors, to be destroyers, right? So if they're not destroying, they're preserving their energy as much as possible. Is they're not gonna say something unless it needs to be said. They're not gonna move unless it needs to be moved. You know, so that, that was the way is, is when you were going into a scene, is you know that you, that these characters were essentially like power plants, mm -hmm. but they just weren't focused in a direction because that's when things get dangerous. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that was the way I, I love that. Yeah. Um, the psychology of a warrior is emotion is a weakness. Yeah. Pain is a weakness. Caring about anything other than your own survival is a weakness. Yeah. Um, but once you, and all the parents know this, no matter what your upbringing is, once you have a child, it changes your perspective. And so then it becomes about you masking pain because this person that I love could be hurt because that person makes me vulnerable because I care. So it has to be underneath the surface but surface, but what do we do as human beings? We mask ourselves, right? And so that's what the stillness and the calmness is. It's a mask so that you're not showing this inferno of what you will do to protect you. And by you, I mean your, your children. That's beautiful. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Let's see, this gentleman in the black hat. Are you a, are you two or BFF or 
<laughs> Do you mean as characters or as two people? <laughs> uh, I told you, I hate him. <laughs> Let me tell you. So I had seen, um, and I always call, like, when I read the news, my suggestions for characters, like who the actor should be. Yeah. So when I saw the drawing of Thor, yeah. let me tell you how surprised I was when you walked in. <laughs> <laughs> this big, good looking, ripped up cat. <laughs> With the good hair game. <laughs> you got the hair on. <laughs> no, I had to get it in order. <laughs> um, so let's just say I was surprised. <laughs> and then when you spoke, I looked at uh, oh, yeah, Eric. I remember, I remember. This is a go for it. I was like, you, you fuckers. <laughs> He's going to take my bath. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was, that was, that was my, my best memory. Of, of when we, did the first, we did the first reading together. And, uh, you know, and anytime, you know, you know, when I'm coming into this, I'm still the new guy at school. So I'm like, you know, I did my homework and tried to prepare as much as I could. And then I started. And we're going through the read through, and I don't have a line for a good a good bit, and I'm just sort of sitting there, and then I and then I did one of the lines, <laughs> and Chris stands up and goes, whoa whoa whoa, <laughs> and he goes, you trying to out base me? <laughs> and I, was like, <laughs> I was like, well, I gotta bring it. Right? <laughs> That's the truth. And that, and it was it was it was like the it was like all right, I guess I'm on the right track. <laughs> And, you know, hopefully what we've done, because the way Hollywood, Hollywood is set up very adversarial. Yeah. And what we've tried to do uh, at Sony Santa Monica is really celebrate greatness. Yeah, and people yeah. Celebrate yeah. people for their greatness and give them the opportunity and support to be whoever they are and whatever you have brought, yeah. we, we support it and love it because yeah. you have done the work. Yeah. Yeah. And they are so, and when I say they, I mean Eric and Corey and Matt, Rid, everybody, you and me, everybody are so good yeah. at, because they take the time to get yep. to know people yep. before they hire them, which is crazy. Yeah. Like no one puts in the work anymore. Sure. These cats, put in the work and they have not been wrong not once in yeah, nine yeah, years yeah. but also the one thing that they is really important to them is will they fit into the um emotional um strength and support of the volume yeah, yeah. and will you buy into it let all of your other shit go yeah and just allow yourself to be loved. Yeah. Because that's yeah. very difficult. Yeah. It's very difficult to let down an armor. Yeah. And just realize, wow, I'm in a place where fuckers love me. Yeah. And I'm free to do what yeah. I think is right. Yeah. It's it's an it's an enormous part of you know is being a creative artist is when you have people who are directing and producing and in control of the entire project when they give agency to to the actors to is it, it kind of just ups your game as you go, oh, so they're gonna let me do what I want. I'm gonna only bring the things that are gonna make the entire project better. It's not just something to highlight me or do this, is I'm gonna bring the highest parts of myself to this because they're allowing that. They're not gonna fight it. They're not gonna go, oh, well, why don't you stay in your lane? Is, is when, when producers and directors and creators give actors agency, is it, it, really, it really helps, you know, you know, sort of, you know, positively reinforce the what uh, you know what actors are, are is beautiful about being an actor, which is that I'm going to take this this um, this two dimensional thing and bring it into a 4D sort of you know universe. Is I'm going to I'm going to embody it. I'm going to make you feel a certain way, and 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 that's the that's an enormous strong point. And what it shows a lot of the time with with creators, whether they're showrunners, directors, or producers, is that. They they're confident in themselves. Is that they go? I'm you know I'm confident enough to let you do what you do, so that I can do what I do. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's beautiful, man. Yeah. It's uh, you know uh, people like ask a lot. Uh, not just my performance, but everyone's performance is like, 
how did you guys like get those performances? Like, how did you guys do that? And you know, I don't know everyone's process, and I, I don't care to. Um, a, a lot of people that are called to this business are in, come from places of great pain. And for you to make a conscious decision to access painful parts of your life that sometimes, as in my case, I spent decades trying to get rid of, um, to make that hole open up and allow this terrible shit to be the basis of something real. It, it takes a great deal of trust yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in the people around you to put yourself back into this horrible space. Yeah. You know, and uh, what allows you to do that is because when you, after you're done, there's loving yeah. arms yeah. waiting there yeah. to give you what you need. Yeah, and, and also to speak to that is, you know, is what's, what's beautiful of, at, about the entire process is when you go into that, like, emotional, you know, psychological, spiritual territory of something that's wounded or something that's very, very intimate, is the service that, that we're doing is, is completed when you guys go, I have felt that exact same thing. Mm. Is that gives, is, is, you guys might not know how important that is. So when you come up and say, like, when you share that you had that same experience, it gives us more courage to continue to keep pouring out from that place mm. and not just be an actor and say a line a certain way in the mirror, but to actually access these very genuine right. points of, of intimacy or, or woundedness is, is, is it's for you guys. Is, is, so that's, you know, thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's see, um, right here in the yellow. When you do motion capture with choreography or fight moves, do they give you real weapons or... Yes, they yeah, give us yeah. real weapons. Let me show you this star, <laughs> my, my hand. Let me tell you. <laughs> no, it's, it's, the, it's the absence of that. The, and this was the hard, I mean, it, this was actually the hardest part and most fun for me, is why it felt like, you know, doing a junior high school play, is that they're goofy looking things. I mean, I don't know if, you, if any of you have seen the behind the scenes stuff, but, you know, I mean, Molnir was just like this styrofoam thing, you know, and, and I mean, and all this, everything looks like like something that you'd find at a garage sale. Right. But, you know, right. And it's got stickers on it, and it's made out of foam. And right. you're going, I got to do what with this? <laughs> yeah. They can do wonders with pool noodles. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. The Blades of Chaos, the first time I used them, were two sawed in, well, one sawed in half pool noodle connected by pieces of tape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> and you watch the guys, the animators back, you know, when you watch them and they're going, this is going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> really? All right. <laughs> Let's see. Thank you. Uh, also right here in the yellow. Uh, so how did you um, take these, you know, words on a page for creative assistance and then what was your process like to be able to take them from two-dimensional, just text-only, you know, characters and bring them to life? Mm, I mean, that's, I mean, we just kind of, you know, it's a team, it's a team effort, right? Is that, I, again, that's the best part of being a part of a crew that is top-notch, is that everybody, and, and also, you know, being an, an actor, being an on-camera actor, you're sort of the tip of the spear, is that every single department is there to make you look good, is the writers are there to make sure that you're saying it right, they're giving you great things to say, they're balancing out your levels as much as they can, they're giving you agency to bring things that they didn't think of, but that everybody behind the camera is, you always have to remember, is that they're there to make you look great. So is, you know, is as long as you do your homework and you show up on time and know your lines and continue to play with all of your strengths, then, then that's, that's all you can do. Yeah. Uh, there's really, I, there, I, I'm sorry, I saw you looking, but there's really nothing I can add to that. I mean, that, would, <laughs> that really uh, encapsulated very well. Uh, you in the back, 
Yes, you. So one of my favorite scenes of Score is uh, in Asgard when he is coming down to save Atreus from Heimdall kicking his butt there. As an older sibling, I saw a lot of the uh, annoyance of, okay, I don't want to deal with you right yeah. now, just go away. Yeah. What was going through Thor's mind when you, when you said, you tell me? Oh, God. I mean, that exact moment? I don't know. All I know is that I'd have three younger brothers. <laughs> oh, there's more of you? Yeah. <laughs> so that is playing, playing that, it was very, very, very easy for me. Yes. The, the annoyed older brother, you know, was, was, was very sort of easy to, to tap into. <laughs> Let's see, red shirt right here. You know you're going to die in the next Star Trek, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious because I think it's enjoying it so just like in general how was it working with him and also if there's any type of relationship maybe with Kratos like with Kratos as a mentor or anything like that just in general. With Sonny? Um, you know, I've known Sonny since he was nine years old. Um, he's now 18. So to watch, and you know, obviously his evolution is not complete, but to see where he started as this kid who literally, if you could hold his attention for 30 seconds, <laughs> you were winning. Yeah. Um, and who was more interested in learning, you know, his next trick on a skateboard and which may not have turned out so well. Um, I, no, I didn't mean to make light of that. Although I did. Um, he's 18, a little quick. Um, to see who he was when we left 2018 and who he was when we came back for Ragnarok, he already knew all his lines and he came with suggestions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was like, who the hell is this kid? Because yeah. <laughs> he's always been just smart as a whip. Yeah. Um, but you could see that the first game, it was just like something cool. You know, he could tell his buddy, his skateboarding buddies, who were his real profession, that I'm doing this game. <laughs> like, he literally thought the coolest thing about the whole game was when um, uh, he had his own avatar. <laughs> like, or, you know, what's that thing, you know, you can yeah. buy and, yeah, he thought that was the, the best part of it. Ragnarok, he had put in some work. Yeah. And to see this young man thinking about relationships and thinking about contextually, how does this scene work into the grand scheme of things? It's, uh, it's, it's been really fun to watch. And I, I'm, it's like, I feel like a proud papa, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. just seeing who he's becoming. Is, is really wonderful to watch. All right, we got time for one more. Wait, you got somewhere to go? <laughs> got a date? Got a hot date? You do. <laughs> I have a hot date? <laughs> yeah, with these lovely Ooh, people at your booth. Tell me more. <laughs> the guy with the tube in the back. <laughs> it's a pool noodle. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> um, probably just uh, the 200th episode um, was just, we filmed basically five episodes in one episode. And so all of our departments had the same amount of time to prep for this episode as they did every other episode, even though it was five different episodes. And we had people, this was our 10th season, who had never been to set, who came down that week just to feel like loved and appreciated. And it was um, really just uh, that week was just a chance to tell everyone, you know, how appreciated they were for, because oftentimes, you know, it's, it's such a machine, you don't get to meet, like, you know, seamstresses. Yeah. You don't get to meet the people who paint your weapons. You don't get to, but for that week, everybody came. We had a Teamster, our Teamster head, Moss, 
came to set. And if you know anything about filmmaking, <laughs> the, the the lead the lead teams would really never come to set. Boss came to set, um, and it was just a week of hey, we really did accomplish something. Yeah. You know, two hundred episodes is really something to be celebrated. So yeah. I, I mean, that was That's my huge. favorite week of the show. That's huge. Oh, we really are done? I was like, that answer wasn't that good. <laughs> Let's take a few more, just a few more. Okay. Uh, oh, geez. Uh, yeah, you said a few, look at them. Uh, All at once. Let's see. <laughs> uh, 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 this guy here. All right, Chris, Ryan. So I was wondering, yeah, is there anything that maybe you wanted to add to the character that maybe Eric Williams or Corey Barlog, like maybe something you didn't agree with them with that you wanted to like, no, not not for me. No, is um, is it was so, I, and you know, for me as, as an actor, I'm you know, I I always come to the table, you know, just like annoying the shit out of producers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I I did this show called uh, Bates Motel for a couple of seasons, mm -hmm. and um and they originally came to me and they they offered me this role and I and I looked at it and they said it's a biker and he dies at the end of this season and I said yeah that's all right I'll pass, <laughs> and and then they came back two or three times and said, you know, uh, you know, we, well, what do you want to do? And I said, well, um, one of my favorite parts about Hitchcock is that Hitchcock is a sort of master of ambiguity, is that all of his characters that you watched, you're not completely in love with and you don't completely hate. So I wanted to create this character that if you were in an elevator with this guy, you wouldn't know whether to be scared or to laugh or to feel sorry for him. And they were like, okay. So I wrote up this monologue and then I put on this crazy outfit and I did it and they went, we'll do that. Uh, you know, is, but is, you know, so that's, that's what I usually do on something. And a lot of the time I'll get like, we have the script, thank you very much. <laughs> um, but for, for Thor, is, it was so, I mean, they had years and years and years of developing out every little bit that I, I, I literally came and was just like, I ain't touching this, is, is you know, I'm not gonna improve this thing into a failure, is, 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 is this is, is you guys, is, you, you, show me where to, you show me where to go and I'll get there. Um, I, I had the, it, it, because I was taking over uh, a much beloved character, and you know, you remember when I was announced, some of you weren't too kind. <laughs> um, <laughs> they got it worked out. Um, so I purposely didn't watch or even allow my kids to play any of the previous iterations of God of War before I started because my thinking was if they're rebooting and then they want something different to spearhead this new direction. Um, but I leaned very heavily on uh, Corey and Bruno. Bruno. Um, we call, I, I call Bruno the Lord of all things sexy. Um, <laughs> because like all the, the, every move that Kratos has, Bruno created it. And so I allowed for once because I, I'm great for going, uh, have you put as much time into this character as I have? Yeah. Then shut up. <laughs> don't tell me how, don't give me line readings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, but I felt so comfortable um, really listening and taking to heart that these cats love this character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they've all been there from day one, Eric, Bruno, uh, uh, Corey, They've all been there from day one, from God, from game one. So I felt very comfortable sitting and talking with them and discussing how far away from the much beloved Kratos that you knew to who is this new Kratos going to be. So it was it was very collaborative. Yeah. I have one funny story was, this was the other bit that I thought was hilarious. Again, it was just my learning curve was, 
so there was all this kind of like hush hush around the set and they were like you know uh in between takes we want to take you inside we need to talk to you and i said okay and uh and they said uh so i'm and they kind of kept it going you know before lunch we, we really need to talk to you and i was like all right this doesn't sound good and uh and then they they said all right so we want you to record we're dropping the first trailer and we want you to record this one line and i was like okay what is it and they were like are you a calm and reasonable person and i was like okay <laughs> and they were like, and they're, they're looking like this, like, isn't this great? And I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> and so I, I do it, and they're like, and they're sitting there, and everybody's going like this. And I'm going like, what? These guys are nuts. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. And then, and then I saw the trailer, and I saw the people's reactions, and I was like, they were right. <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, I was like, holy shit. <laughs> and, that, and then, it was very funny, like the week after the trailer dropped, I was at a, at a convention, and somebody walks up and goes, can you please write, are you a calm? And I was like, yes, I guess I can. <laughs> Who's writing this? <laughs> well, you know, uh, it's so great, because they are not the typical people who make Entertainment. Yeah, yeah. They are gamers. Yeah. Who love games. Yeah. Through and through. And who really are really connected to giving the best gaming experience possible, but also telling the best story possible and have it be this one cohesive thing. Because as we all know, it used to be the only dialogue was to get to the next boss fight. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they've really succeeded in to at making gaming this beautiful narrative uh, of, of storytelling and emotion and some kick-ass shit too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a it's a wonderful. It's, these guys are are few and far between because you can say to anybody like, "Hey, write a story that you'd like to read, or make, or you know, write a script of a movie that you'd like to to see," which is. You know, there's there's a plethora of, of history behind that. But to say to somebody, make a game that you would want to play, that's that's an extremely extremely hard endeavor. And these guys are are you know are you know priced above metal. You know. uh, I just was the pitch for Ragnarok was seven hours long. <laughs> the pitch. <laughs> Which, um, before we started, they allowed me to, to watch it. And I sat there in one sitting and watched this presentation that Matt and Rich did to writers. And I, I was like spellbound. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you can watch the next half, because I think they wanted the room back. <laughs> you can watch like the second half, like tomorrow. Like, nah, yeah. I'm watching it now. <laughs> and then I, then I said, please, you have to make this available to the rest of the cast yeah. because there's no way just like kind of reading it. Yeah. You get the scope of this yeah. and how it all ties together. You know, it's crazy. Well, thank you guys both so much for your time. Yeah. That is oh, all wait, our wait, wait, time. Oh, wait, 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 we're ending? Yeah. yeah. You've decided that we are done. <laughs> <laughs> Has there been enough moons? <laughs> gonna take Cracker Jack timing, Wang. Total concentration. You ready, Jack? I was born ready. You will come out no more. What? Huh? What will come out no more? Out of your mind, Wang. God bless you. <laughs> it's all in the reflexes.